Ιστο όνομα του Πατρός και του Υιού και του Αγίου Πνεύματος. Αμήν. Please be seated. The words of the prophet Isaiah. And behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and he shall be called Emmanuel which means God is with us. Words spoken almost 3,000 years ago, a full 800 years before even Christ was born. Words spoken by a man who was helping his king understand what was about to happen. The northern and the southern kingdoms of Judah and Israel were at war. And the prophet Isaiah was speaking about the end of that war. And that before the king, King Ahaz, saw this son, the son of a virgin, the son of a maiden, who is to come and would end the war. And so for 800 years, the Judeans, the Jews, the followers of Yahweh, were waiting for the anointed one, for the Son of God, for the chosen one who would continue the kingdom of David. They believed that the Davidic line, remember King David? who lived a thousand years before Christ, so some 3,000 years ago, King David would extend a line of kings forever and ever. And so thus the importance why Jesus is called the son of David, why Joseph is considered coming from the house of David, looking to a king who would unite the tribes, a king who would banish and defeat the external forces. And so it is this military might, a king that would save the people from their enemies. And it is with this understanding that Jesus is born into the world as the Christ, as the Messiah, as the chosen one who is extending this line of King David. Now the Gospels link this line from prophet Isaiah to Jesus. And we quoted that prophet today. After we read those long list of names, 14 generations... 14 more, and 14 more. Now, do you know why we chose the number, or why they chose the number 14? Do you have any idea? Well, I found something interesting. Because according to the alphabet, the Hebrew alphabet, the Hebrew letters are the sum of the name of King David equal 14. Dalet, D, 4. Vav, V, 6. And Dalet, V, 4. 4, 6, 4. 14. Because the Jewish alphabet, as it's written, only writes consonants. D, V, D, David. And so even in the number 14, contains the essence of David, his name. And so this savior of their people, David the king, the psalmist, right, who wrote all of the beautiful psalms that we read throughout the years, who showed as the initial king how to connect with God 
through repentance, through humility, by throwing ourselves at the mercy of God despite all challenges. This monumental figure, David, who fought Goliath, David with the sling, hitting Goliath in the forehead and knocking him down, this figure overshadowed and came as the, the background for Christ as we understand him. Now, at the time that they wrote the Gospels, they said, the son of the virgin, and we will call his name Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. And he will save the people, not from an army, not from invaders, but Jesus, who will be called Emmanuel, the son of a virgin, will save people from their sins. And so we know Jesus as osotiros, the sotir, the savior. How many times have we said that? Savior, the savior of our souls, the savior of the world. Jesus, sosonimas, yetheu, save us, O son of God. And so this salvation, this act, is at the central core of our entire faith. Saving. Now we might ask ourselves, what are we being saved from? What do we need salvation from? Do we have barbarian tribes, uh, you know, breaking down our walls and taking over our cities? No. Gone are the days of uh, military might. We are not asking for salvation from some foreign invaders. And so, how do we understand the salvation? What are we being saved from? What do we need to be saved from? You see, the truth is, my brothers and sisters, there are many things that are out of our control. There are so many things in our lives that we have no say. What happens to us? What challenges we face? What enemies might be at our doors? And so understanding this salvation is important because it doesn't teach that we're going to be free from challenge. The gospel doesn't say, ah, if you believe, you will never struggle again. You will never have another problem. In fact, it says you will. But there is light. But there is an answer. There is salvation waiting for you. And so as we approach this Christmas fast, the season when the Savior is born into the world, we can ask ourselves, Lord, what do I need saving from? Are there enemies, whether outside or inside? Can we also not be saved from ourselves, from that little voice in our head, or maybe a loud voice? that sometimes we are our worst enemy, that that voice in our head that doubts, that questions, that says you're not good enough, that says you don't deserve to be happy, you don't deserve to have love in your life. You see, the enemy can be out there, it can be other people, it can be entire nations. But the enemy can be in here. Isn't the devil uh, a very tricky, uh, a very dangerous foe, right? Because in an instant, he can plant thoughts and ideas. And the enemy that we're fighting is invisible. And so as we 
approach this salvation, as we ask for Christ to save us, we know that he lived then, but Christ is saving us every minute of every day. The salvation that he offered through death and life on the cross happened 2,000 years ago, yes. But in the eternity of God's present moment, where there is no time, there is no past, there is no future, Christ is being born every moment. He is saving us every second of every day. And so that salvation, which is real, which is for you and for me, is present in every moment. And so let us face with courage those fears. Let us overcome those doubts. And through the power of Christ, we vanquish our enemies and we say, Emmanuel, for God is with us. Amen.